Welcome to the video! In this video I'll be showing you how I painted a watercolor portrait using primary colors and later in the video I'll be showing you how I edit my watercolor out for digital display in Krita. If you want to skip to the editing, you can find the time code in the description under the video. Ok, let's get started. First, I started with a sketch, which you saw in the beginning. For the primary colors, which for this piece were red, yellow and blue, I used the St. Petersburg White Knights colors Ruby Red, Cadmium Lemon for yellow and Ultramarine Blue. I do mix the colors a little, but end up keeping them mostly separate. I will just call them red, yellow and blue going forward. I began by using a diluted red to map out the locations of the shading. I tried to make this painting more loose because I was inspired by Alicia's gorgeous style. Check them out to see wonderful watercolor art. There's a link in my description. So my painting ends up with a very painterly vibe, despite the sketch underneath. Talking of the sketch underneath, this piece of paper has been through a lot. I have previously sketched out and erased two ideas on it that I wasn't happy with. So this piece of paper has been marred by deep pencil marks and erasing before I even began painting on it. It's good quality paper, so the painting experience was still nice, but you can still see the deepest pencil marks from the erased sketches underneath the painting. But this also contributed to me being more relaxed and loose with the painting, as I was not in fear of ruining the paper, since well, it was already a little ruined. Anyways, back to the painting process on the screen. I mixed the red and blue for purple, which is almost the only color I mix. And then I deepened the shadows with that color. Then I came in with the yellow in a quite diluted state to show where the light hit on the right side of the composition. Then I add the blue to the deepest shadows such as in the mouth and in the nostrils. And then I dilute the blue to help deepen some shading that needed to be darker, but not as harsh as the fully loaded blue would make it. After painting in the pupils with the blue, I just go around the painting, deepening the colors here and there, adding more saturation as I go. Then I have a lot of fun with the hair, doing swoops and swishes as I please to create a curly look. After that, I go in with my tiny detail brush and do the darkest shadows with the blue and I also add a very thin outline where I feel the piece needs it. Then I go back in to have fun swooshing around with the hair again. Then I add some final saturated parts with the red and yellow. And 
then it's done. At least the actual painting part is. Because this is how the scanned version looks. Where have all my lovely saturation gone? My depth and my crispness? The scanner ate it, I guess. But there are ways to fix this. And I'm going to show you how I do it with the free digital painting software called Krita. So hang tight. I have the scanned file open in Krita and the first thing I do is to remove the paper border. It also helps me check if the image is skewed, which it wasn't this time, so I could just cut out the rectangle of the portrait. Then I flip the image just to see if it's leaning too badly. In this case, I deemed it as being okay. If you are curious on how to unlean a leaning painting with Krita, check out my video on fixing my flawed watercolor painting. Link is in the description. Then the magic starts happening. I add a filter layer. I start with a color adjustment layer and play around with the curve by dragging on it until I'm happy with the result. I use it to bump up the saturation while adding depth to the darker colors and give the lighter colors a small bump up in brightness too, so as to create more contrast. See the difference? It's amazing! Then I add a filter layer with levels. This allows me to up the contrast even more and make the whites of the painting more white. play around a lot when adding filler layers, just to see how the painting would look if I inverted it or if I adjusted the hue and silly things like that. It's good to explore and if you do, you might find something that works even better for your art. Add a filter layer to dodge the highlights, you know, to make them brighter. Then I play around a little without making anything permanent, before I zoom in. And now you can really see the marks from the previous sketches I talked about. I contemplate adding a sharpening filter, which can enhance your beautiful watercolor textures. But I decide against it. Then I add my Instagram handle, come visit me there if you want to keep up with my art on a day-to-day -day basis. is the finished product. I really hope this was helpful or just entertaining to you. Don't forget to subscribe and like the video and come visit me on Instagram too. 
Feel free to leave a comment too, especially if you have suggestions on what you want to see more of from me. See you next time. Goodbye.